a very large U.S. corporation operating out of Mexico and the Caribbean just learned a very hard lesson about what the term Seguridad Nacional means to people who actually love their country and aren't so all fired up interested in serving the needs of mammon. Now, if you haven't seen this story, stick around. You're going to want to hear what really happened and this particular corporation better thank its lucky stars. They didn't try to pull what they pulled when I was in the military back in the 80s or 90s because they would have had to deal with not only the Mexican military, they would have very likely had to deal with ours as well. So stick around. But good news, <clears throat> Justice Knight is safe. Now, for those of you who are unaware, yesterday I put out a video where it was very clear that Lisa Haven was a vampire. And I'm sure she was none too happy to have her secret outed on YouTube. And Justice Knight did the very best he could to try to calm things over earlier today. He put out a response video and watching through it, I could see there was some coded imagery and coded messages in there where he was trying to call for help. I mean, he really didn't say it in so many words, but it was daytime, so clearly she was downstairs regenerating in her coffin, so he had to be very careful about what he said. So, anyway, those of you who haven't seen the video, this has been something that we've been doing the last couple of days. Lisa Haven, Justice Knight, um, Restricted Republic, having a little bit of fun, talking about psychological operations and how you can look at certain things and put them together with other unrelated things and see some kind of a connection some call that apophenia but you know clearly he pointed to the fact that lisa haven has the ability to drain the life force of other people around to make it seem as if she's human so that she can appear in mirrors and in pictures and in this particular case we see an example of that so the evidence continues to mount and we just need to make sure we keep Justice Knight in our thoughts and prayers because, you know, we don't know on a daily basis what he's going through. So, anyway, uh, if you haven't watched Restricted Republic or Lisa Haven, check them out. They have a really great uh, side gig going with this channel, We're Forked Up. I'm going to click it here real quick. They go out to restaurants and uh, sample things and have a lot of fun, and it's a great diversion from the serious news of the day. But if you would like to get right in on psychological operations and how you can use different tactics and techniques to make people believe things that aren't true, because the funniest part of all of it was it was clearly a joke, and it's been a joke going back and forth between the two of us now. There are still people out there that uh, they begin to type before they even watch the video, and they take the entire thing seriously as if this is really the case, that, you know, she's a vampire and she's holding him hostage and uh, secret signs and all this kind of stuff. So I'll put the links, a description, first pinned comment to um, his response video and the original video and everything that we were talking about. But PSYOPs, it's going to be something everybody's going to absolutely positively have to be uh, trained in and know what's going on. But let's get to the story of the day. American company outraged after Mexican military police seized Caribbean facility. This is insane. Quote, this forcible seizure of private property is unlawful and unacceptable. Senator Katie Britt, Republican, Alabama. Okay. Let's all just take a breath here and let's read what actually happened and why this occurred. For those of you who are unaware... This all occurred down here in this place called Quintana Roo. Now, funny story, if you, if you Google Trump, Donald Trump, Quintana Roo, he had some dealings down here a long time ago where he kind of got into it with the Mexican authorities and uh, wanted to get some property. Things didn't work out, and they didn't allow him to bully his way in there as well. But this is a completely different thing. Playa del Carmen, we covered a boat explosion here a couple of years ago, but down here, the only deep water port, the only deep water port on the peninsula is right down here in this area. And this company Vulcan 
had been working out of this area, but they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, so to speak, and they lost their license. Let's read. The seizure of an American company's quarry, quarry facility in Mexico by the Mexican military and local state police has sparked outrage among former and current government officials, as well as appeals for the Biden administration and Mexico's U.S. ambassadors to intervene. According to Vulcan Materials, a Birmingham, Alabama-based company, and the largest producer of construction aggregates in the U.S., members of the Mexican Navy, local, state, and police, along with federal investigators, entered the quarry just south of Playa del Carmen in Mexico's Quintana Roo State in the early morning hours of 14 March. Then they forced the company to allow CMEX, a Mexican-owned materials company, state-run, read, to unload a shipment of cement from a ship in the port. Vulcan previously leased, previously leased land to and provided offloading and handling services for CMEX at the site. But the agreement expired last December and talks for a renegotiated contract broke down. The company said... CMEX completed unloading the forced shipment on Friday. However, the military and police have remained in control of the property and have given no indication they plan to leave the company said. I am writing, and here's a quote, I am writing to request that your government immediately order its forces and officials to leave our private property. That's hilarious. Vulcan chairman and CEO J. Thomas Hill wrote in a letter to Mexican ambassador Esteban Moctezuma Baragan, on Thursday, two days following the initial seizure. The government's participation in this gross violation of our property rights is yet another example of the government's arbitrary and illegal treatment. It's not arbitrary, and they even reveal this in the article. And illegal treatment of Vulcan and its investments in Mexico. This occupation must cease immediately. Vulcan has been in tension with Mexico for months after Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador forced a shutdown of the quarry's operation in May of 2022. Lopez Obrador accused the company of trying to extract minerals from Mexico without the required permits and ship them to the U.S. The government suspended Vulcan's customs permits on May 13, just days after shutting down the quarry, which the company has said put a strain on its ability to provide the stone construction aggregates to construct roads, bridges, and other infrastructure in the U.S. and has prompted lawmakers to request the Biden administration take swift action. The quarry has remained closed amid legal proceedings in the Mexican courts, although Biden administration officials have been working with the Mexican government to find a solution, the company said. Senator Katie Britt, Republican Alabama, a ranking member on the Senate Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, told Fox News Digital that she discussed the tensions between Vulcan and the Mexican government with Mexico Secretary of Foreign Affairs Marcelo Ebrard. While on an official trip to Mexico City last month, she told Fox that the Mexican government need... Here we go. Here we go. Here's the psyops. You ready? She told Fox that the Mexican government needed to focus more on going after the cartels, endangering Mexican citizens, and the millions of tourists who visit the country each year. Quote, this forcible seizure of our, of private property, is unlawful and unacceptable. It is shameful that the Mexican president, presidential administration, rather, would rather... Here's a, more psyops rather confiscate American assets than the fentanyl killing hundreds of Americans per day as if that's that's the false dichotomy choice. You see, here's the case. Here's the reality of this. If the Mexican president, the leader of Mexico, believes there's wrongdoing going on with a U.S. corporation and he says, no, sorry, this is our port, this is our only deep water port on the peninsula. It is a matter of national security. We have magnanimously allowed this U.S. corporation to operate here, but it's not going to operate against the national interest of the Mexican people. You see, if you, if you did this in the United States, a foreign corporation did this in the United States, there would be people saying, oh, dang right, the U.S. government's going to stop you from doing this. Dang right. They'd be all about it. And like I said, and as I referenced, if this had been back in the 80s and 90s and a U.S. corporation had tried to defy the Mexican government, we would have sailed a couple of Navy ships, U.S. Navy ships, down there. And we would have taken control of the port we would have detained every single employee of Vulcan 
And once we had full control of that port, we would have then very graciously and apologetically handed it back to the Mexican government and said, we apologize for the ridiculously narcissistic and arrogant behavior of this corporation down here making money as a guest in your country for them to behave and act in this way has been entirely inappropriate and we will do everything we can going forward to remedy the situation likely to include seizing Vulcan's assets that's what would have happened under Reagan this is a bunch of horse crap this shows how far this country has gone into the pockets of big corporations that they can go down there and they can literally steal. It's literally steal from the country and they think they're too big to fail and that they're going to get away with it. And then the Mexicans say, nah, nah, sorry. Nope. We're not having it. And then for them to get a senator to say this, I'm telling you, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember this collage I did. This was a few months back. Nobody wants to hear it. I'm telling you right now, Brazil... Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela, they get all in the same sheet of music. It's over. It is over with U.S. corporations. And this is something that a lot of people confuse. The people of the United States and U.S. corporations. See, there's this thing called false dichotomy. False dilemma. When only two choices are presented, yet more exist, or a spectrum of possible choices exists between two extremes. False dilemmas are usually characterized by either this or that. And how does that apply here? Well, this particular person here says that, well, they can either focus on the fentanyl or they can do this, and they chose to do this, so clearly they're anti-American. You see, this is the idea. It's that, number one, if there wasn't a market for fentanyl in, in North America, there wouldn't be any flooding across our borders baloney going on. See, they're not bringing it here and giving it away for free, are they? There's bunches and bunches and bunches of people, all sorts of excited, breed Americans, about the fentanyl coming here because they want to buy it. They want to hand over the U.S. dollars for it. So, and those of you who make the kid argument, look, when I was a kid, if I had come home under the influence of anything, whether it had been a cigarette or alcohol or whatever, and my parents would have found out, and they likely would have, they would have made sure that I wasn't in any kind of medical jeopardy based on what I had ingested, and I would have gotten my hide tanned, even for taking it for free. You see, this, this is really the problem that Americans don't want to admit. And this is something that the leader of Mexico has actually said. And rightly so. The, the drug problem in America is an American problem. When Americans stop wanting large amounts of drugs, and they're willing, when Americans stop being willing to pay for them, exorbitant amounts of cash, it'll go away. And that's just the case. And this is an argument, believe it or not, that has been going on in this country for a long time. Young America's Dilemma. This is way, 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 way back. This is a very old cartoon. Shall I be wise and great or rich and powerful? Poster from 1901. Because no man, no man can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. This is where we're at. This is the reality of where we're at now. This issue with Quintana Roo, this issue with Vulcan, is about God or mammon. It's about U.S. corporations. It's what they try to do in Venezuela. It's what they have very successfully done in Colombia for a very long time. But now, countries are getting tired of it. They're seeing the game. And the idea, the hubris that it would take for the Mexican government to say, hey, we have a state-run ship bringing in cement and we need to unload it here at this port. And then you refusing to, as a U.S. corporation, 
I mean, forget whether there's a contract or not, or just do it to foster good relations. It's one ship. That the Mexicans had to send in the military is embarrassing. Every, every American should be embarrassed of this right now, at the behavior of Vulcan. They should have, of course. You see, that the proper response, the proper response, Senator, would have been something more to the, the line of, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. We, of course, um, condemn wholeheartedly the choices made by the board of Vulcan and as a representative of the people of Alabama, we apologize wholeheartedly for their very short-sighted and selfish decision-making. We, of course, would love to have a CMEX ship unloaded at our port, and we would do so at no cost to foster good relations with our longtime ally, the Mexican government. Regardless of this license or that they didn't have this or whatever, and, and this is happening, and they're saying that, well, we, we, we don't have this going on. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Reagan, Reagan would have made one phone call. Reagan would have made one phone call to the CDC. He would have said, get the CEO of Vulcan on my phone right now. And he would have said, tell your people to unload that ship. If you don't, we're going to seize your assets. And I'm going to send the U.S. Navy down there. We'll take the port and then we'll hand it to them. And you'll never operate a lemonade stand in North America ever again. That's how far we've fallen. That's how far the right has fallen into the lap of corporations. It's just unbelievable that they, that they would deny a state-run vessel access, but they learned, and they learned the hard way that not everybody worships corporate America and their, des and their designs. Now, if there, like I said, if there's contract negotiations to be done and there are monies to be transferred one way or the other to get things done, get people paid, that can all happen. But ports, and this is ancient, ancient maritime law, ports, regardless of who is operating what, doing what, ports are not private. A nation's ports can never be privatized. And this goes all the way all the way back to the Romans. Ports are by definition matters of national security, even Florida. As independent as we are of Washington, DC, this was the whole thing with the cruise ships that we got into with them. Because you know, technically still being part of the United States on paper, not really in reality, but on paper. Those ports are national security issues. That's why you usually see most major deep water ports very, very close, closer right in. You see U.S. military presence. So I'm just going to leave it there. I know a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but it's, it's the reality. It is absolutely the reality. It doesn't matter what you think of Mexico or what you think of Venezuela or what you think of any country. Their ports are theirs to do with as they see fit. And if they want to lease and be magnanimous and, and let a business come in and make some money, that's great. But when it comes to national security, no U.S. corporation should even consider the idea of interfering in the national security operations of another country. It's just, it's just nauseating to me to think that we, we have corporations now that would do this to other countries, so... And like I said, flip everything around. If it was our country, we would have seized it a long time ago. Long time ago. Wouldn't matter who we were leasing it to. So I'll leave it there. But uh, once again, let's just keep uh, keep Justice Knight and, and Lisa Haven in our thoughts. So 
God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.